Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Tea with Mona Me. Today it is just me again and I am so excited to be talking to you guys about some of my favorite honeymoon destinations. Five of them to be exact. So I'm going to go over five of my favorite honeymoon destinations, what I love about them, and some great places to stay if you want to go visit them. So this is in no particular order. So don't think that this is like my favorite to my least favorite or my least favorite to my favorite. I love all of these destinations equally, which is why I wanted to talk to you guys about them today. The first destination I want to talk to you guys about is Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico I chose because it is a U.S. territory. So that means if you and your fiance do not have passports, you guys can go to Puerto Rico. It's still very tropical. It has a lot of stuff to do. The plane ride isn't crazy long well depending on where you're coming from but Puerto Rico is awesome so what to do in Puerto Rico there is lots of outdoor activities you can do zip lining you can do ATVs you can go on a boat you can go to the beach you can hike there's a lot to see It's definitely a place that is rich in culture as well, so you can enjoy great food, you can see live entertainment. It's it's honestly just, I I personally believe Puerto Rico is super underrated. So there is a lot. Not to mention because it is a tropical place, you have spas, you have a lot of relaxing activities, a lot of bonding activities you can do with your partner. So Puerto Rico is truly very, very awesome. Oh, and I forgot about one of the cool parts of Puerto Rico, too. So you can visit the Bacardi Rum Factory if you drink. You can visit the Bacardi Rum Factory, which is super cool, too. So as far as staying in Puerto Rico, I chose two hotels and I kind of chose them for specific reasons. So the hotels I chose were the St. Regis in Puerto Rico. For a St. Regis, it is actually fairly affordable, in my opinion, um, if you're looking in that bracket when it comes to stays. Like, if you're looking at luxury stays, St. Regis, I do believe, is is a really great value. It's actually built on a coconut plantation, so an old coconut plantation, and it overlooks the beach. So you'll have those beautiful views, lots of areas to explore within the resort itself. Now... If you still want luxury, but you're a little bit more on a budget, I recommend the OLV Hotel. So that one is going to give you the posh rooms, the beautiful decor. But what's really cool about that one is it is an adults only resort. So you will be only with other adults. And the views are absolutely spectacular. The rooms are fairly large and it's got this great like rooftop pool area and you can see the ocean and all the stuff all around the city so i definitely recommend that one it is a lot less expensive than the saint regis but still a lot of bang for your buck i also when i was looking found some really great airbnbs with all of these that i'm going to talk about so i think that what i'm going to do because it's going to be i'm not going to describe the airbnbs to you It's easier just to like say the hotel names for you guys to check out, but I'm going to do a Pinterest board on our Monami Pinterest with the Airbnbs I looked at and also the hotel slash resort stays. So you guys can go check out that. We did a blog post about honeymoon destinations also. So you can check that out. I'll put a Pinterest together for just like activities and for stays. So the next destination would be Santorini, Greece. And I'm gonna try and talk about this without playing favorites because I just believe that Greece is so beautiful. But the big thing with Greece is the architecture. So if you're somebody that is really into architecture, you kind of like more laid back activities, I highly recommend Greece. You're going to see beautiful sunsets, you can go on boats, you're going to eat great food and drink great wine. And then something really cool about Santorini. So it actually has one of the largest volcano eruptions recorded in history. But don't worry, because the eruption was 3600 years ago. So you can actually go on a boat tour of the volcano. I don't know if I would 
do that. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's very cool that there's these, there's this chance to see this amazing, you know, I'm sure it's so stunning. So that is a fun fact about Santorini. But if you're going to go to Santorini, experts highly advise that you go September or October or April or May because these are seasons when the weather is really nice or times when the weather is really nice, but there's not a ton of tourists there, so it won't be so crowded. And as far as stays go, I found two hotels that I was absolutely obsessed with. So the Maregio Suites in Ia, which is an area when I was doing my research that I saw was super great for watching sunsets. So take some notes. You need to watch the sunset. But um, what I really liked about these suites was a lot of them have really like what I really liked about these suites was a lot of them had their own pools. They had great views. The decor was very modern, very beautiful and it was very reasonably priced. Let me just go ahead and say, because I didn't say to begin with, once you get past your flights, I would say that Greece, when I was looking as far as things to do and stays, is one of the most affordable places I have on this list. So if you're looking to go abroad, you want somewhere that's going to be beachy, you want something laid back, definitely check out Greece. And there's other big cities in Greece, so or bigger cities in Greece. So if you're not completely sold on Santorini, there is other options for you but it was super affordable when I was looking at stays and if we're talking about bang for your buck you're getting a lot so the other resort that I found is called Astoria and Astoria is awesome it is an adults only resort so another adults only option for you it has beautiful large rooms it has only like 40 suites in it I want to say it might have been a little less than that so it only has so many suites, so it's not going to be super crowded. There is a restaurant, a beautiful infinity pool, views of the ocean all around. And a lot of the suites feature their own jacuzzis or pools as well. So Astoria, definitely check that one out. I did see some Airbnbs when it came to Santorini, but for me personally, I think I would opt for one of the resort options because they're kind of built like Airbnbs anyways, and they're super affordable. The next day I want to talk about, or the next place I want to talk about would be Mexico. So I feel like Mexico is one of the most popular honeymoon destinations, especially for us over here on the West Coast. It's just so close. Flights are always so cheap. All-inclusive options are always there. And it's Mexico is just fun and relaxing and really great. So as of recently, I would say the trend with Mexico has been Tulum and I kind of see why. So I'm doing my research and I'm looking at the different options for Airbnbs, for resorts. So Tulum is such a bargain for Airbnbs. You can get a beautiful villa, a beautiful home with a pool in the middle of the jungle or on the beach for fairly, fairly cheap and on top of that there's a ton of stuff to do so you can explore the jungle on ATVs or you can do hikes you can go through the Mayan ruins there is beautiful beaches you can go on a boat for the day there is so much to do not to mention great food good entertainment it's really just a good time but I do want to say with Mexico I recommend that you go Airbnbs if you're going to do Tulum Airbnbs, VRBOs, some kind of vacation rental because the resort options in Tulum just did not seem like they were as good of a deal, like you were getting the most out of your money. With these vacation options, if you're thinking, well, what about food or what about this? You can actually hire private chefs to come in and cook for you during your stay. And it is not as crazy as you think as far as price goes. Definitely something to look into. Uh, Airbnbs come with it. And if they don't, a lot of times they have the add-on service, which you can add. But I will say if you're going to do Cabo, Cancun, if you're going to do something like that, I would stay at a resort and take advantage of the all-inclusive options so you don't have to worry about anything else. The next honeymoon destination I want to talk about is Japan. So the next two I'm going to talk about are going to be a little less tropical because I know that that's not everybody's jam all the time. So Japan is really, really beautiful. It is rich in cold 
culture. It has a city. It has a little bit of tropical. It has really kind of everything. And why I chose Japan was the cherry blossoms. So if you're gonna do Japan, I highly recommend you go in the springtime because that is when they have the cherry blossoms. They are so stunning. And there's a lot of like cool float festivals that go on during the springtime as well. Not to mention they do have some winter amenities still open, meaning that you can actually ski at some ski resorts in the springtime in Japan. So you have everything. You also have great food. If I didn't already talk about the food, you have great performances. There's lots of shows and stuff like that. A lot of entertainment in Japan. And you have a big city with Tokyo, but you also have like Okinawa if you want to go to the more tropical side of Japan. So there's a lot of versatility in Japan, a lot of different things to do. If you're going to stay in Japan, I would recommend the Four Seasons Tokyo or the Conrad. They are both five-star luxury stays. But when I was looking at their nightly prices, it honestly looked pretty good as well. I did see some really great Airbnbs in Japan as well. So I would definitely check out Airbnb, VRBO, any kind of vacation rental. Just be cognizant of the fact that apartments in Japan are very small. So if you're looking for a really spacious stay, you might be better off with a hotel room. Just kind of depends what you're looking for. But there were such cute apartments on Airbnb when I looked. So definitely check them out. So the last honeymoon destination I want to talk to you guys about today is France. Just really broad. Just France. <laughs> Just France. Because there's different sides of France. So you can go more towards like the French Riviera vibe and go kind of to like Nice or do something like that. Or you can stay in the city and go to Paris and explore everything it has to offer. France is gorgeous. If you haven't already been to France, I would highly recommend you go to France. It has so much history, as many European cities do. There is amazing architecture, great museums, great food, great shows, literally great everything. It is a place that I would think would be really great to explore with the person you love, especially on your honeymoon. After all, they do not call it the city of love for nothing. So France is another one, too, where I feel like these other destinations kind of have times of the year that would be best to go. Puerto Rico being tropical and Mexico being tropical, I would definitely recommend more so in the spring through summertime and also maybe in the fall, but not in the winter. France would be fine in the winter. Japan would be fine in the winter. You're going to look at a little more cold, but if you can handle that, then I would definitely say France or Japan for winter over the other destinations that I mentioned. So when it comes to France, I'm sure you guys know a lot of the stuff that you can do in France. You can see the Eiffel Tower. You can go to the Arc de Triomphe. You can go to the Louvre. You can go to really the Moulin Rouge. You can do all of the sightseeing stuff, but there's also amazing shopping, amazing food, and amazing shows. And really, you never know with France. You could walk down a block and find something amazing so it has that entertainment factor of it like you're always going to be entertained when you're in France. So one of the stays I found was the La Reserve. It was actually designed for couples and it has only 27 suites in the La Reserve. The suites are apartment size so they're decently large for hotel standards and it's really just intimate and cozy and the decor is very modern and beautiful and of course the pricing on it is not super crazy. However, if you're going to do France, I recommend Airbnb. This would be one of those ones where I would recommend a vacation rental over anything because there are beautiful vacation rentals available for the price of a hotel room. And it takes you out of the touristy position of like any kind of crowding or anything like that. So Airbnb, France, I would recommend that. Yes. So these are my honeymoon destinations. I really just covered them briefly, but like I said, I will add a Pinterest board for these so you can check out these stays more extensively. Um, depending on who you are, I think there is something on this list for everybody. And I really do want to stress that if you don't have a passport, and you don't want to get a passport, Puerto Rico is a really great option. So if you guys are interested in doing a 
in states version of this. I'm probably going to do an Instagram poll and see if you guys would be interested in that. Some in-state honeymoon destinations because I do have a list of those too. There's some really great places we have in the states for honeymoons that I think could be great options for you if you're looking for that. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode this week. If you like this podcast and want to hear more from us, you can follow us at at Mona Me Bridal Salon on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok. I think that might be all of them. And then, of course, the wedding websites, Yelp, all of that. So until next week, I will see you guys later. Bye.